First day of the uh, loft conversion, I'm going to make a series of videos from sort of initially starting out, putting the steel work in to, to full completion. Um, so the day's plan is, I'm going to put two pad stones in, or four pad stones, sorry, two at either side, uh, in preparation for these columns going up. These columns are a 203 by 203 by 46, got approximately 4 metres and approximately 2 metre section to connect together with the splice joint. Um, what I did as far as steel and stuff like that, so I submitted a building notice to the local authority uh, with what I intended to do. Not a full plans notification but like a building notice with some basic sketches. Um, they approved them with sort of fairly little hassle. Um, but what they did say is we need to see a specification for your steel. So I then went online, found a company that um, did like steel calcs. Um, I think I paid about 60, 70 quid. And they did me a full specification for the steel work, which I then passed to the council. They submitted that. I then got several quotes for steel. Now, funny enough, I think the company I got the steel from was J Fabrication at maybe Warrington, which I just found maybe JA plant hire and steel fabrication at Warrington which I found just on Google I did get several quotes from local companies but they were like literally half the price I think it just cost me over a thousand pounds for this steel similar companies in Darlington was two grand and I think I've also got a bit of fabrication done so I've got some drilling in the web for where timber needs fixed and I've got the splice joint drilling and stuff like that all of the specification that the engineer came up with originally and it was still better value for money so it's definitely worth shopping about for your steel. So what I want to do today is, is a little bit of rubbish up in the attic left to clear out so maybe an hour or so clearing that out and then what the specification for the steel shows is a pad stone at either end so once we get up there I'll, I'll show you in a bit more detail but I'm going to put the pad stone in. Um, so before I do that I'm just going to make a little template of how the steel is just so when I'm knocking bricks out to put the pad stones in, it all fits in. And it make a bit more sense when we go upstairs. Template, I've got a piece of cardboard. Very basic, not very square, but that's a basic outline of me steel. Yeah. Sort of like that, so I know when I'm putting my pad stone in, I need to knock enough bricks out to get that behind it, and it needs to go in the wall 100 mil. So we'll look at that when we go upstairs. So this is basically the loft before any work started. So got the old boiler. That's where I'm going to start my work putting the pad stone in, so we'll have a look at that in a minute. So the television aerial and the gear blend on this side. So now we're stood just in front of the boiler, so that's where I said I was putting the pad stone in. Oh, the chimney breast goes up. You might have seen the other video when I was putting the flow liners in. Idea about that size. So the idea is steel column along that side, steel column along that side, wooden joists coming across the floor, which will be at the height of this. So it's still got plenty of headroom. Hopefully, we'll be able to get it so it's just above this. So it's still got plenty of headroom in general. Uh, obviously, it will be dropping down to insulate it and barred it out, but not a massive amount. 
a few skylights going in, so I can't remember without looking at the drone, but I think there's one skylight over there, two over here. Um, the job I want to start today is put the pad stones in. So that's a pad stone I bought from Jusons, it's 140 by, so yeah, 140 deep, 440 long and uh, 100 mil wide or however you look at it um, which is basically what was specced on the specification for the steel so my plan is knock a few bricks out put that in set it on some mortar and probably take the bricks out above that the steel's going to sit on do that in all four corners so do that over this weekend and possibly next weekend depending on how easy or not it goes um, and then we'll go from from there so just a quick update I've got uh, it knocked out there uh, I've got the pad stone just sat in loosely it's a couple of bricks above it as you can see so it probably took about an hour um, what I did was I grinded sort of with my grinder I cut the mortar out um, and then once I'd, once I'd got one brick loose, basically it was fairly easy to cover your wall. So, but once I got one brick out, it was fairly easy. So I'm now going to go over here, uh, sort of behind the aerial. I've got a dust mask on. That's why my voice is a bit muffled. Anyway, sort of down here, sort of across from where that one is. Try and get one out there, and then that'll be this side done. It's very dusty in the air because of the brick dust, so it's not focusing very well. But anyway, so the joist, the steel column will run from there to there, just this side of the uh, existing wooden one. So the sort of thing that I've got to bear in mind is there's this cross piece going across. It's sort of a structural piece to the existing roof. So I've done that pad stone, so that pad stone is one centimetre above, or it will be once it's set on the mortar, one centimetre above that. So once the steel's going across, there should be a centimetre clearance above that. The, obviously I want it as close as possible, so the floor's as low down as possible. So I'll have as much head height as possible. But what I'll do is, and you'll see in later videos, I'll be hanging the um, the wooden floor joists off joist hangers. So hopefully I'll get the actual floor joists so that only a couple of centimetres above that height so we're not losing a lot of floor we'll see how that works out as we go on now this is the other side so you can see I've got the pad stone in at the other side now so there's the original one I showed you there's this one obviously it's not cemented in or anything like that yet uh, on mortar I mean I'll probably end up doing that tomorrow so it's about half one in the afternoon now so I'm gonna do that one now and then if I have time one I found that wall which is the gear blend wall a lot easier to do than that wall so I'm gonna do that one first get it out the way it's a bit it's probably gonna be the worst one that one and then go on the other one so quite pleased with how progress is going like I say, ideally, if I could get them all sort of knocked out today, and then tomorrow, get them, like, just have a day mortar and them in and levelling them up and get all my levels through and stuff like that. Uh, we'll see how it goes. So, just a final pan round. You can see I've got the pad stone over there. The pad stone over there. And there are the two I showed you earlier. So what I'm going to do tomorrow is sort of set them in the mortar. So I'm going to set up a straight edge, which I've sort of half done there, but just as a sort of basic check, but I'm going to have a straight edge going from one side right to the other, make sure I've got a level, and then set them in at both sides. So that's tomorrow's job really. So you can see now I've got the first of the pad stones mortared in there. I've levelled it off across to here 
I'm in the process of doing the second one now. I've got my level to me point there. I've got a packer under there, five mil. Um, so that'll mean once the steel goes in, she'll be able to get a five mil clearance between that pad stone, five mil above that structural piece of timber that's staying in, over that pad stone. It's all nicely leveled off. Um, it's a bit of brickwork to make good, but what I'll do is I'll do that once the column's in, then I can bed in round it. So I've got these two still to do over here now. And we'll mix a bit more mortar. The mortar mix I've used is a four to one. Towards there, just a trowel, tuck pointer, a few levels. So, yeah, like I say, it's a four to one mix, so that's four sand to one cement to a nice strong mix um, for what it's been used for. And I think it's worth spending a little bit of time at the minute leveling it up now, so hopefully, once the steel goes in, there's minimal fuss. That's the plan, anyway. So, I've now got all four pad stones in. That's one, move the light, two, three, and four. So they're all sat in, got me four to one mix, uh, like I said earlier, four sand, one cement. Um, probably be a couple of weeks before I can get the steel in now, um, so plenty of time to set. Um, so that's it. Ton chain block with the strap with the two shackles on the end. We'll pull it in like that. It's an Afro prop. So the small one went up fairly easily. So we'll have a think about whether we're going to do the other. We're probably better off trying the big one next. So just a bit of an update. We've got the uh, four meter length of steel in, and we need to obviously get it up in the loft. So we've tried manhandling it, but we've come up with a bit of a point where it's too difficult to do and it's probably not safe to carry on. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to knock out a bit of ceiling. So that piece there is going to come out. I'm then going to put another acro prop across the top, get my second block and chain, use a block and chain to come down to lift it up. So we'll be able to lift the steel and then the other block and chain to pull it in. So I'm going to do all the preparation tonight and then hopefully we'll do the lifting tomorrow.
just a bit of an update about what we're going to do today. So we managed to get one steel up yesterday. Uh, I didn't get a chance to fill them the first steel, but I will fill them today's for you. So, I don't know if you remember, we had it on the stairs. See that? And what we did was, we were using some straps on my chain hoist and in the attic. So I'll go in the attic and show you that. And then, like I say, I'll try and actually fill them a bit more of what's happening today. So we set the chain hoist up at the other end of the attic, so it was directly above the opening. Um, also borrowed another chain hoist. Um, so we had my long chain hoist and the short one across two, the, attached to acro props. Each one is attached to a se separate acro prop, so I don't know if you can really see that. And then they're going back down the opening. We've also had to take the banister off. Uh, I've, I've took the banister, the banister will be going back on. Um, so I've took it off in one whole piece, which put it in the dining room for now. And then there's obviously a staircase to go into. Once the staircase is in, I'll then put the banister back on then, rather than putting it on, taking it off and putting it on. So you can see for now, we've got like the steel over here. Then the spooky old Moses basket that was left in the attic and it's resting on the pad stone. It's resting on the pad stone at one end and it's on that timber joist that goes across at the other end. But that joist is supported by a brick wall underneath. So, um, But the end piece is none. But if we pan round and look down, there's the shorter two metre section there. So the reason I haven't put that shorter two metre section on is because when we put the next big bit up, we shall need to go into that corner and then feed it over in, into where it's gone. And we thought it might just obstruct us, so we've left it off for now. Well, first job will be to get the other big piece up. Um, and then once the other big piece is up, probably put that little piece on and then put the uh, other little piece on. So, like I say, we'll try and get a bit more video footage of that today. Now we know what we're doing. So we're going to try and drag the steel up the stairs in a minute.
big piece of steel up here now, the second piece of steel. So the next job is we're going to get it over here. So I'll try and put the camera somewhere. <laughs> you want to go face forward, not sidewards? <laughs> okay, now we should lower Wayne down on the winch, shouldn't we? Can we do it next? <laughs> oh, Winch him oh, down. Oh, Need like a little buggy for him. <laughs> you see him getting on them steps there. Yeah. Right, so the beam's in from pillar to pillar. The bolts are in. Need to um, talk enough, but the bolts are in there. Oh, fairly tight so we're going to get the last small beam in over here small section in over here get the plate on and then we'll get it all talked up so i'm just wanting to get a bit of final footage and what we can see is there not very easy one to get to but a bit better see it's all nicely uh, bricked in i'm just moving around by hand so we've got no tripod so that's why it's a bit bumpy so there we can see the joists are fully installed pan round and the bricked in at either end so yesterday I ordered some timber I've ordered it I got a couple of quarts but juicings came out about the best I uh, I actually opened a like a trade account, and when I say trade account, it was like a cash trade account. So I, I think anybody can open one really, but uh, I found it was cheaper I, to ring them up and get a price over the phone, um, and that worked out cheaper than the prices it was giving me online anyway. To be honest, so you probably a bit of a pointless exercise opening the account. But anyway, I've ordered the timber, so I've got quite a lot of timber turning up on Monday, hopefully. Um, I'm off Monday, Tuesday this week, so Monday I'll probably be taking delivery of the timber and sorting stuff out. But Tuesday, hopefully, I'll start getting a bit of timber up here. So I need to put the wood inside of the web of the joist. I then need to put the joist hangers onto that, which I've just got today from Screw Fix. And then once I've done that, I need to span my joists, which I think are 75 by 195 mil. It's so fairly big, but anyway, so from there. To there and that's a that's four meet that's a four meter span actually that exactly um isn't and that's just by accident it's worked out at that the design specification actually is for it to be at, i think 4.4 meters so it's sort of shorter than what the maximum span we originally allowed was and that's because i think on the original design i, I we were going to put the steels underneath the back back timbers um but it was a lot easier just to bring them forward. So, uh, th so this this will be the this is the first video that's going online. Then what the next video I do will be fireproofing. So hopefully that's going to turn up on Monday as well. So we'll get it fireproof Monday Tuesday. Um, it'll then have the rest of the week. I'm back at work Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. But then Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, I'll be cracking on again. So it'll have had sort of several days to dry. And then we'll start getting some timbers in. I also need to email the building inspector because I don't know if they want to come and have a look at anything at this stage. 
but I'll, I'll get plenty of photographs I'll email them the photographs and, and see what they say basically um, I'm not really sure whether they'll want to come and look at it or not but we'll see what they say so next video will be fireproofing then we'll have looking at the floor the skylight still are going there's insulation are going so there'll be loads of videos coming on over the next few months but um, hope you enjoyed this one thanks for watching